Well, welcome back to this uh, cooler day. So as I mentioned in, in the last video where I worked on the uh, limited slip, I still had to do some stuff with the brakes. Now this one's already done. Uh, nobody seems to have touched this side. A lot of the stuff was, uh, I believe, original. At best, maybe the pads would change, but that's it. So that's what we're going to do in this video. I'm actually just going to replace everything. I decided that the cost versus risk uh, wasn't worth it. So, you know, the stuff is relatively cheap. So I just decided I'm going to replace everything. So, so far what I've done on this side is I replaced the seal. I replaced the brake cylinder. I replaced the pads or the shoes. I keep saying pads, but if I do say it, I mean shoes because uh, these are drums. And I'm replacing the whole hardware kit. So all the springs and whatnot that, uh, you know, come in a kit. Now on this side, what I still have left to do is I just got to put the C-clip on the, the axle. And then I have to just adjust the brakes. That should be about it. The drum I've already cleaned up. I'll show you that in a second. I just cleaned up the interior. I didn't do anything special. I did not buy new drums. So I'm reusing the original ones because the original ones um, were, were still pretty good. So... Um, I'm just going with that. So here is the original drum. As you can see, it's pretty good. I don't honestly have any deep, deep scratches, grooves or anything like that. I mean, there's, there's some scratches, of course, uh, you know, debris and whatnot get in there. But honestly, I've run my finger on there and I haven't found any kind of issue that would warrant me resurfacing these or, you know, dealing with something in a way that uh, might have, might I might need work or having to replace them. So, so far they're still pretty good and I'm going with that. So on this side, I really didn't do anything yet. I'm just starting this one. I wanted to work on the other side first um, because I knew that there was going to be some spots that were going to be a bit of a headache. Um, and there was one and I'll show you when I get there. But this side, somebody's been in here. And the reason why I can tell is because, well, that's a still a brightly colored uh, spring and these are still pretty shiny usually they rust out after uh, use and whatever it is at some point or another through time the cylinder also doesn't look as bad as the other one the other one looked way more pitted the other thing that i noticed which i didn't realize at first is that uh, the parking brake on this one is disconnected and the cable for the adjuster down here is also missing so I'm going to have to go ahead and look for that, uh, which sucks because I actually got these parts, all these replacement parts relatively quickly. I think it was three days and we had a holiday over the weekend. So um, I was pretty happy with that. Um, the other side didn't really have anything major. I think this spring was broken on the other side. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else and I don't think so. Most of the stuff just came right out. Uh, even the uh, the bolts for the uh, cylinder came right out. Uh, I was pretty happy with that. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is actually probably just loosen up the bolts on this side and the uh, brake line on the other side, and hopefully that comes out okay. As for the drum on this one, it is dirtier than the other side for some reason. There's a lot of junk in there, which the other one didn't have. And now I'm not sure if this is recent or not, but there's definitely a layer where the pad wasn't touching or at least making good contact, but that could have also been because of the oil. What I will do with this one, which I didn't have to do with the other one, is, is I'm just going to wire wheel the whole thing. Um, I forgot to mention too that I did wire wheel the edge on the other side, uh, but there really wasn't much. This one seems to be worse for wear for some reason or another, but this will get a good cleaning and I'll show you when I get there. Okay, so definitely somebody was actually in here um, those bolts were actually really easy to take off and the first thing i'm going to do is actually just try and take some of these springs out uh, if you're working on one of these and you're not sure about how to do it leave one side on don't touch it um, that way you'll have a frame of reference just remember that things are kind of mirrored or flipped in a different direction you know they really only the pieces only go in one way to function all right let me just start taking apart some of these springs i'm actually just going to start from the bottom here Try and keep my pieces in one place so that way I don't lose anything. And wow, this thing is a little seized up. All right, let's just try and go to other springs.
Sometimes vice grips works better. That is what I'm going to do here. Try and pull that over. Yeah, maybe not. Well, how did I do it on the other side? I can't even remember. Oh, I think I just destroyed the spring, but that's okay. I'm not reusing it. At this point, everything is going to be replaced. Well, I mean, everything's going to be replaced, but there are some parts that you're going to reuse. But the springs, for sure, I will not be reusing those. So that's another indicator. There's supposed to be a piece here that goes and carries the small cable for the uh, parking. Uh, sorry, not the parking brake, but the uh, the adjuster. And even that little piece is gone. So that tells me somebody for sure 100% has been in here. And that there's no doubt about it. Sometimes these can be a pain in the butt. But you can sometimes get them easily. Now let me check the condition of this. I might actually just keep these as a a backup or a spare, which is probably what I'm going to do with these ones. They're acceptable in my books. Let's see, this should just fall out. There we go. Um, so this is for the parking brake. I'm actually going to have to remove that. Here's that. Here's the adjuster, but holy cow, why is it so difficult to take off? There we go. And it's also frozen. So that's going to be fun to take care of. <laughs> I can get this out of the way. So I am a believer in, you know, things happen for a reason. I think that when I opened this up and saw that it was not in good shape, um, first off the parking brake, you, you kind of want that to work. Uh, this one, I'm going to have to play with it a little bit. It might be stuck. I'm not quite sure. I believe when I tested it, 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 it was, um, coming, going in when you pull it to lock it and then releasing or it, 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 yeah, it can't speak, um, extracting from the sleeve or popping back out. So, um, you know, I think it's okay, but I will double check it. All right. So the bulk of that is done. Still got to take the cylinder off and disconnect the brake line. Like I said, those are loose. So it shouldn't be too bad. I'm just gonna get, get rid of some of these parts here and then I'll work on that. All right, actually just went to eat lunch because I was getting pretty hungry. But I should be able to just take these off now. Oh, almost forgot these guys here. The two bolts are gone. Let's remove the brake line. Hopefully I don't hit my head because that's something I've been doing quite consistently. And this needs a bit of a knock. And there we go, that's out. I'm gonna clean all this stuff up. And to do that, I'm just using a wire wheel on a drill. Super simple. Oh, this one has way more dust than the other one. Oh man, so much stuff flying all over the place. Gross. Oh man, I need a mega shower later. I'm not really sure why this is so loose, but I think I can just easily pop it out. And I'll just take a look at the clip. Maybe I'm just going crazy. Wouldn't surprise me, actually. All right, for now, that's fine. Take a look at it after. Might just be the way the clips are done or something. I'm not sure. Strange, the other side was greasier, but didn't have as much of this stuff flying all over the place and then this one wasn't as greasy but man it's got stuff flying all over the place oddly enough this one is cleaner than the other side in terms of like the original paint the other one was rustier not sure why now without trying to fling some stuff onto the bearings here which i have a little bit um, i want to clean this little edge here because that helps for installing the new seal i did it on the other side and it, it was fine I didn't go crazy, it really is just to remove the little lip from the rust. Now I'm gonna shoot a bunch of brake clean in here and hopefully make sure that that's nice and clean. All right, I'm gonna give the inside a little wipe here. There's still some grease and whatnot from, uh, or oil, whatever you wanna call it, 
from uh, the di differential. I'm just trying to remove the junk. All right, that's done. Uh, I am going to go ahead and put the seal in so that way I get rid of that. I don't have to worry about it. it feels all right. There's a little bit of rough spot because of, there's still some some paint from the other seal that was in there. And I remember on the other side, even just trying to install that, it gave me trouble just because of uh, the paint on the uh, seal. But let me get that. So you can see that they're painted on the side. This one is green. The other one was probably red. It left kind of the mark on the inside there. Anyway, I had a little bit of trouble on this. We're off to a good start there. And basically, you just want to try and get these to go in a little flush. But like I said, I had a hard time with this. So this footage is probably going to get edited quite a bit. So this is one of the issues I had. One side went in, the other side did not. And then I had to play around with it. And that's what I'm going to have to do now. So I'm going to have to move the camera because I need more room. All right, successfully installed. I always try to really be careful with seals and stuff like that. It, you don't want to break the, uh, the basically the rubber ring that's in there. What I used was this big socket that I actually use on my tractor. And it was just about the same size. And it was small enough to fit within here. Um, and it made the installation a lot easier. You could probably do it with a hammer right directly on. But you wouldn't get it in as far. At least I think. And you'll know how far or how deep it is because you can't go further than the bearing that's in there. And if you're not sure, there's like a little lip on here to help you get that ring or that seal in there. And then you can see that it'll butt up right up against that edge, um, like as it's coming down. So that's the slope to put it in. It'll be right up against that edge up here. All right, I'm gonna do the cylinder. I can take this plug out because I'm gonna have to use it at some point. So on the other side, this was my absolute favorite fun exhilarating amazing fantastic whatever fun word that you want to throw in there trying to install this most of my issues came from trying to install the brake line um, i don't know if i had tweaked it a little bit i could not get it to line up in here um, after struggling with it for probably a half hour and saying all the words that you can imagine i ended up finally getting it by simply just leaving the cylinder loose and the line loose and then I was able to twist it around and position it. That's exactly what I'm going to do right now. There's a little plug in there. I'm just taking that out. Uh, it's always good to have clean pliers or whatever <laughs> when you're doing that. But let's see. Let's see if I can do this. Because honestly, this was one of the pains in my buttocks. Because there's really no movement there's nothing you can do and it's like you just got to get the right angle there's no flex there's nothing there's no it's it's a fine thread and it feels like you're gonna get it sometimes oh and oh man are you kidding me I should have hit record on the other side what a joke this, that went in pretty simple. So now, the other thing I had problems was putting these bolts in. So I am putting a little blue Loctite on there just to make sure it's in nice and secure. It doesn't back out. And this is also what gave me some issue on the other side. <laughs> this one is going in quite nicely. Yeah, I should have hit record on the other side. Now, if my hands weren't too oily, it would make it even easier, but c'est la vie. It's all from the brake line fluid stuff. All right. Ha! What a joke. Man, the other side gave me such a headache. You wouldn't believe. I mean, you would have thought I was insane with what I was dealing with there. So I'm not cranking these down big time. Um, just enough. You know, my torque meter, torque wrench says, you know, 20 to 40, somewhere in there. All right, and that's done. What I am going to do is open up the bleeder and let that gravity bleed. I'm just going to tighten it here. I am using a flare nut wrench. When the uh, line isn't stripped or busted, they work really good. And there we go. So I'm just going to pop open the, ble the ble bleeder. 
Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to take it all out. And that way I'll be able to tell if it actually is coming out. So next step, I'm actually going to clean up the pins and put those in there. And there we go. I'm just going to push them in so that way they kind of hold into the rubber seal. Oh, oh, too much. All right, that's good there. Uh, what's next? I'm going to install the front brake pad here, or the shoe, and then I'll move on to this side. All right, so I'm just going to also lubricate these little pads that they touch. Um, I try not to go too crazy, but I'm definitely putting on too much right now. But it's all good. So the cool part about these brake shoes, uh, again, if I say pads, I mean shoes, uh, is they're universal, meaning that they can go on the left or the right side or the front and the back, however you want to look at it. Um, I applied a little bit of grease here because that little pin tends to slide there. So it's just a little thing. I don't think it's 100% necessary, but that's what I'm doing. Just going to put the retaining pin back here. Slide this on here. There's only one place that it goes and then things have to move and then I'm out of alignment and I got to try this again. <laughs> Ugh, par for the course. Par for the course. Now, stuff is always going to move. At least that's been my experience. So I'm going to try. It's going to be hard for me to show you. But there's this little spring. There's that pin. This pin here that's uh, right back there that I'm holding with one of my fingers. And what you want to try and do is put this spring with a little cap on it. That's a locking cap on there. And what I do, and all I'm trying to do is with these needle nose pliers, is try to compress that on there. And hopefully you get it right away. And then you rotate to lock it in. And then hopefully nothing else moves out of place and you're still in line. And now I just moved it out of place and try to push this back in here. Now that's all I need. Yeah, so let me show you because I don't think I demonstrated it. So that's the pin that holds the shoe in. There's your spring, there's your cap, your locking cap. Uh, if you can see it, the pin only goes one way to put it in, but then you rotate it to lock it in place. I'm actually just going to go ahead and actually put the uh, bleeder valve back into the cylinder because it's actually just dripping right now, which is great. For now, that's good. I'm going to have to come back and actually uh, bleed it at some point. All right, so now I'm just trying to deal with the uh, parking brake line here. I think it just wasn't seated properly. I'm just going to try and adjust these little like pins that hold it in place. If you can't see me, just take my word for it. It's just three pins. They basically got to flare out so that way they don't pull out when you use it. I do think this line might be stuck because the spring is quite compressed. Hmm. Do I need a new line? I might. Because now here's the problem. So I noticed before that, you know, I'm missing some of those pieces uh, for the uh, parking brake. I have to order those. So I can't get them right now. Uh, I also noticed uh, the adjuster down here uh, was seized. I'm going to show you in just a minute. And I could not separate it. I tried heat. I tried penetrant. Nothing. So, uh, I might also need this cable if I can find it. Oh, it looks like it's rubbing up against the uh, shock. Let me, let me take a look at what that's going to take and if I can even get it. Because if I can't get this line, then it's not worth it for me to try and fix the parking brake stuff. Oh, actually, no, I still need... Hold on, hold on. I'm probably getting things confused. What I need actually is the stuff for the adjuster, not the parking brake. Uh, the parking brake, I thought this was okay, but it doesn't look like it is. Maybe I can play with the um, parking brake by pulling in and out the cable and see if that unlocks. Let me just play around and kind of bring back, uh, bring it back to uh, where I think I am. Confusing. All right, so here's actually the complete, like, parking brake mechanism and as you can see one is returning and the other one isn't this is for the driver's side or the left side and this is for the passenger side or the right side you can even see like how loose it is so for some reason this one is not returning i sprayed some pb blaster on it i'm going to do another little shot 
and then play with the brake and see if that returns. Okay, as per usual, Lost Wheels fashion, um, I gotta stop it here. Uh, I need some parts. I wanna take a look at that and see if I can get a cable. If not, I'm gonna take that one out and try and fix it. If not, then I will not use it, which is not ideal. I don't like, you know, relying on just one to hold me back or whatever the case may be. Um, it's nice to have two because then if some if one fails, then you have the other one. Uh, this is pretty much where it is. I can't go any further than that because I need to figure out what I'm doing with the parking brake and I also need uh, the um, all the adjuster stuff. So uh, you can get an adjuster kit. I just got to find out if I can get a cable and go from there. Uh, this sucks. So here's the adjuster that came with this one that was installed. This is from the 92. I tried seeing if I could use this one. Uh, they are directional. There is a right one and a left one, and this is from the right one. And this one is in worse condition uh, physically than this one. This one is locked up. I tried heat. I tried uh, just propane because that's all I have really. I think I have maps somewhere, but I'm not 100% sure where it is. Um, but it is fully seized. I mean, it was so hot that even the vice grips holding it were getting hot. And then I started chewing into the part that holds the other side in. So this is going to get completely replaced. I know I can get a new one of these. And well, basically it comes in a full kit with all the cables and things and stuff. So in trying to get things prepared, I think I'm just going to go ahead and clean the drum out. And get all that junk out. I got to get another can of uh, brake fluid. I already used one, <laughs> one complete one on here. But I'll get this one prepped so that way when I go to install it, it's already ready. And I don't have to do anything else. And there is the drum cleaned up. Um, most of the gunk was actually down here. Uh, this cleaned up pretty good. Again, no weird ridges. All I did was use a wire wheel brush thing uh, on a drill and cleaned it up. It's not perfect, but it's clean and it will do the job. And that's all that I care about right now at this point. Like I said, I still got to get some stuff. So I'll come back when I get that stuff. All right, back from the parts store. Just took a couple of days. Uh, not too bad. Picked up the uh, brake cable or the parking brake cable and then the uh, adjuster kit. Here's the one that was in there. As you can tell, this part is actually within the drum. It's actually supposed to be springy, uh, but it's all compressed. I pulled on it and tried to get it loose, but it doesn't want anything to do with it. I have a feeling that these little worn in spots are an indicator. Uh, there's another one up here somewhere. Can't remember. No, that's probably where it clips in. Oh yeah, right here. So you can kind of see it's a little worn in. Um, I have a feeling it's not it wasn't routed correctly. Unfortunately, I already installed this and routed it roughly the same way. Um, I took a deep look at it and kind of realized it might be in the wrong place. Uh, unfortunately, it's all kind of in there and I don't really care too much to undo it. But as you can tell the difference, you see the spring here, the gap. Um, it's a lot nicer and definitely spring here. And then it's routed that way, but I actually think it's supposed to come this way. Uh, anyways, it's all clipped in. There's a, a clip on the hump of the um, differential or the pumpkin, and then there's a bolt on the other side. This bolt right here, and basically that just holds that in there. And then right there is where the clamp is. And then there is the cable, all new and inserted. So let's switch to actually finishing up the drum brakes. Okay, so the first thing to putting on the rear uh, pad, uh, shoe, excuse me, uh, is just popping in the parking brake cable. And that's it, it's really simple. Oops, I forgot all my other stuff. Hold on, let me get that. All right, so the clip to hold that in there. Looks like it's falling out here. Ugh. I shouldn't have touched it. <laughs> Is that usually the way it is? Anyway, okay, that's holding there. I'm gonna pop this in here. Try and get this in the right place. There, get this to rest on there. Hopefully I can line it up and just rotate it. This one might be a little tricky. 
because the parking brake cable wants to push on it. And that's exactly what it's doing. Let's see if I can get this a little straighter. Whoa. I'm just going to try and leave this in some way loose so that way I can somehow get this on there. This is when you wish you had like three hands. I don't know why this one seems to be giving me more trouble. Is it because the cable is new? I don't know. Here, oh, oh boy. All right, that should help me a little bit. I do not have it. In a good way. Oh man. Alright, let's try this again. There we go. Push that that way. I got this in. And. Ah. Don't move, don't move. Ah, there we go. Okay. Jeez Louise. There we go. Okay, that's all in. Oh, I forgot something. Dang it. Hopefully I can put that in without without having to take the whole thing apart. It looks like I should be able to. So this guy here should go in here. Maybe it'll be easier this way. Spread this out that way. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Halfway there. And there. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 What's the next thing? I'm gonna pop this guy in there. It's gotta go in all the way. That'll kinda keep the stuff there. Uh, then I gotta do this part here, which has that little cable. Let me get the adjuster stuff. All right, so this cable goes in. That's for the adjuster. Whoops, did I put that on the wrong way? I might have, hold on. Yeah, I put this guy upside down. Should be able to just pry it out of there or not. Flip that over. Let's do this again. The cable goes in. Then this guy, which is for the cable here. Whoops. Okay, maybe I won't put that in just yet. I'll pop this guy in here. And then it holds with this spring here. Oh, if I can get that flush. There we go. Just gonna leave that there. The cable just popped out. It's always fun. Alright, let's take it all apart and then push this back in. And try that all over again as I get a little bit of lubricant stuck on everything. So as long as it's not the pad, then we're okay. There we go. Put this back in there. Wipe the hands off and a couple other things. And I'm just going to use a flathead screwdriver. Not the best thing in the world to do this with, but it's all I have. And hopefully I can do this correctly. And it should just not take my eyes out it's funny how sometimes you work on one side and it goes in real smooth and then you work on the other side and it ain't gonna have anything about it so let's try this again all right let's try this again try this again holy moly what the all right after trying several times a pair of vice grips and bending the spring is what worked. Let's try and bend that back a little bit. Good enough for who it's for. All right. Make sure everything is in its place. I think that's what it looks like. I got to get this guy in here, which is equally just as much fun. Oh, come on. Ugh. Helps if I put it in the right place. Now it won't come out. Man, I don't mind drum brakes, but geez, you really need like four or five arms to do this. All right, let's try and do this other spring. I don't know if I can stick a vice grip in there. I'm going to try it with a screwdriver. Let's try this again. Man, that was close. I'm gonna snap my finger there. I don't know why this stuff does that. It's the weirdest thing. Like it holds and then all of a sudden, nope. It seemed like it's quite sitting in there. 
I mean, it's in there, but there we go. That's better. All right, that cable is still loose, which is nice. I still need to tie it in there. See, there is there anything else? I don't think there is. Let me get the adjuster. So this is the piece that was giving me the issue. It wouldn't unwind. I'm actually going to put some anti-seize in there. And then there's this little cap that goes on there. They only go on one way. The opening that's back here to uh, adjust this manually uh, is more to one side than the other. And then this part has to fit that opening. There seems to be some anti-seize in there, but I'm just going to add a bunch more. And voila. And it, it twists in the opposite direction. So it's a lefty tighty. I just took the excess uh, anti-seize and shoved it in there. Uh, this needs to spin too. It's nice when things are loose and free and that way you don't have any issues. So I gotta loosen this up a little bit. Okay, right now it's, a, it's way stretched out. So I gotta figure out why that is. Okay, well, I'm gonna loosen it up and then I gotta get that spring in and whatnot. Oh, almost forgot something. Hold on a second. I did forget it on the other side, but that one's going to stay that way because it's all assembled. I'm not even going to bother with it. But there is a little washer that goes right here. All right, as long as it's resting there, <laughs> that's it. That goes there. And then this spring comes in here. And then... I gotta find a way to bring that way over there. I think this is where the vice grip's gonna come out again. It has to go in there too. Hang on a second, there's a lot of moving parts here. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh man, first shot, that always feels good. It's not binding. I'm gonna try and loosen this down. If I can looks like it I want it loose because I want to make sure that I'm gonna make sure that I can adjust it to fit the drum it should be good enough and that looks like everything is there I might need a little bit of persuasion to move up a little bit or not I mean whatever whatever works right I think that yeah I'm not gonna to touch it anymore <laughs> Kind of one of those things. If it works or if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That looks all good here. Kind of done with that. Let me get the drum. It's already clean. I'm going to slide it on there and try to adjust. It seems like I have a little bit of anti-seize on there. Ugh. I don't know how people do it and keep these super clean. I mean, like how many gloves do you go through? Oh, well. It's going to go in there for now. Oh, well, maybe I should drop the axle in there. <laughs> yep. I just want to clean the... Uh, make sure that this seal is nice and good and then I'll pop the axle in the axle is also very clean it took all the debris off well it's not because it had debris from from working on it it's just from me handling it and it just gets dirty all right pop that in there nice and easy trying not to rub up too much against the uh, seal just something I want to try and preserve it it's kind of in the bearing now and now I just have to find the spot for the splines there we go nice and easy and voila it's pretty tight in there don't know if that's good or bad guess I'll find out with time all right got the drum in here line it up oh I need to put the transmission in neutral so I can spin this all right so as far as I know, it should rub a little bit, but not too much. And it's not rubbing at all. So there's a little door on the back here. And if you can get yourself in there, it, it adjusts the way it pushes out, if I can get it. Sounds like it's working. That's still not close. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but it's definitely clicking every time adjusting out I think I'm pretty far out so I'm gonna just try and do this inside because it'll be a little easier try that again I think I'm close hey 
just hit my head on the exhaust. Uh, anyway, I think I'm right about that. There's a bit of a scratchy noise, so I think I'm just going to leave it there. As you use the brakes, it will push itself out. That's why it has an auto adjuster. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, and then hopefully uh, that'll be it for this part. The next step is to put in these C-clips. They basically just go in there to hold the axle and it should just slide in if everything fits right. <laughs> How did I get these out before? Hmm, do I have a dilemma here now with these axles? This is something I did not check. This might suck. I gotta go check something. All right, hopefully I'm, I'm correct. I kind of just forgot that the pin was in there and that's what prevents you from getting those C-clips out. I even compared it to the Mustang one and they're pretty much the same. So we'll just take that retaining pin with the screw section on it, or threaded section. And then this pin should hopefully just come out. Yep. Slide that out. And then that should allow me to push the axle in a little bit further. All right, that looks better. Let me put this one in first. So technically just slide right in there with a little bit of pressure. There is an O-ring on there. And that's just to keep it tight and that went in just nice get the other one and there we go that's perfect next step is to put the pin back in just going to make sure it's oriented where i need it to to put that that retaining pin or that whatever you want to call it i forget what it's called what's going on here oh this is rotated that's not good i'll be back all right thankfully i didn't record that just came back from literally messing around with this thing for about a half hour i ended up having to take the whole thing out the reason is because i had shifted it um, because it just wasn't quite right in the same pos in the position that I needed to work at. And then these, this gear and this gear up here decided to slip. And then for whatever reason, I could not get it back. I put the axles back in, tried to rotate it. Nope, didn't want anything to do with it. I actually so pulled the whole thing out. And then with a rubber mallet, just pushed these things back in. Played with the spring back and forth. I really did not want to take that spring out because I knew that I was going to have a heck of a time trying to put it back in. It's, a, it's under a lot of pressure. At least I think it is anyway. I've seen other people take it out and it's not pleasant. So I was really trying to avoid that. Now everything is back in. That pin is there. My suggestion is have the pin like right about down here. Technically, if it's loose and, and in good condition, it should just slide right out. Leave it there. Don't move anything. Put your C-clips in there and then boom you're done just pull the axles out to make sure that it's nice and tight put that pin back in screw it in and then you're done don't do anything else until all that is done otherwise you're gonna have to pull it back out and deal with that whole headache so now the next step is to put the cover on i've already cleaned the surface i just got to double check on the cover and then the nuts and bolts that go on there and make sure that those are clean all right hopefully i have everything here hopefully you can see what's going on um, basically I'm just using an RTV sealer the silicone sealer it's this stuff by JB Weld um, it's blue uh, but it actually says here it's good for differential covers so that's what I'm going to use it for this is clean the cover is clean the bolts are clean I'm actually going to use blue Loctite on the cover uh, nut bolts 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 nuts nuts bolt nuts and bolts I don't know it doesn't really matter now and uh, I don't have everything because I need a way to cut the tip on this thing. Ah. All right, got that done. Got the cover here. I'm just going to put it in my hands in the way it's going to be mounted, which is this way. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pretty much go all around here, go all around the nuts. Uh, I keep saying nuts for some reason, but around the bolts and then install it. I got my bolts right here ready to go. I'm probably just going to install the top one and the bottom one just to keep it straight and then do some Loctite. So here we go. All right, thanks to the wind, I might have a little bit of debris in there, but that's pretty much it. Um, maybe I could have gone in uh, a bit of an S pattern that might have been better. Um, and I went in back into a couple of spots just to thicken it up. 
that's pretty much it. Um, this is the top, and that's the bolt I'm going to start with first. Hopefully this doesn't get too problematic. I just want to go nice and easy. Slowly approach it. There we go, there's number one, there's number two. Just gonna get that to hang there for a minute. I got some blue Loctite, or it's not really blue Loctite, it's actually Permatex, Loctite is a brand. Um, it's Thread Locker, that's the product. Got that one, I don't wanna forget this one down here, so I'm gonna do that, and then I'll pretty much just go all the way around, make sure that everything is good and done. Apparently you're not supposed to tighten this down real tight at first, just enough, and then let that cure for about an hour, and then uh, give it another half turn. So let me go ahead and do that. Alright, so right now I'm just going crisscross with the bolts, they all have Loctite, uh, and just kind of snugging it up. It should ooze out the edges, and then once that's done, I'll just come back in an hour and tighten it up. And there you go, you can kind of see it pretty much just all around being squished out. This is just uh, tight enough that you can feel that it's uh, making contact. Like I said, I'll come back and I'll just tighten those up as tight as I feel like it needs. All right, so I went ahead and just tightened these down. Um, I didn't do anything special, just kind of the uh, elbow uh, torque meter. Um, but funny enough, this stuff, I don't want to say dries, but... Um, it's not sticky to the touch pretty much I would say within 15 minutes While I was waiting I went ahead and bled the brakes on both sides I also tested the parking brake and all that stuff works. So I'm really happy with that Obviously the tires are back on uh, So pretty much I just need to drop this fill it with oil and uh, You know see what happens for those of you who like a good old fart Hey, not yet not yet No, nope, not yet it's hard to do one hand for some reason. Oof, so many things can be said. Why isn't it doing it? It ain't farting. There we go. You quiero Taco Bell. And don't forget to check your rear ends, all right? So it has poured out, um, but I know I'm leaning a little bit more forward, so I need to move the truck and just add the remaining. Right now the plug is in there, just uh, hand tight, nothing special. I'm gonna move it. And just in case you were wondering, this is what I'm using. It's just uh, Castrol Axle Limited Slip stuff. It's an ADW90. Um, I'm, I think that's close enough to what it was requiring. I didn't, again, find proper information. Um, I just made sure I had the limited slip stuff and that was it. Um, I didn't go too thick of an oil, otherwise it might be a, a problem. All right, is my face clean? Kind of looks like it, so I think we're good. <laughs> That was funny when I edited that and saw that. That was pretty good. I had no idea, honestly. Anyway, um, I'm in the truck. I'm going to go try it out on the road and see how the limited slip does. Uh, I checked to make sure nothing was leaking, so either brake fluid-wise or differential-wise, and seems like everything is good. Uh, so I'm just going to move on from there. Also, just in case you were wondering, that gear that uh, was on the uh, back of the uh, differential there, the, the, basically the ring gear, um, it is actually not part of the speed sensor. That might actually be in the transmission, but as you can tell, the uh, needle is moving here as I'm driving, so that's good. I will have to find out what that is, though. I'm kind of curious myself. All right, just about to do um, kind of a dirt burnout. I'm not really sure how this is going to do. Um, not really uh, good with doing burnouts because I really never practiced it. So I figured dirt might be the best choice. So let's just try it. I got another camera filming back there. Let's see what happens. Hopefully nothing breaks. Camera shook, I lost focus on the arm there, but let's see. I'll just back up and let me get my footage there.
Well, I definitely uh, did something. <laughs> there's the pile on one wheel, and then there's the pile on the other wheel. Uh, hopefully that's water. I think that's what that is. But yeah, you can tell just when I took off, I kind of grabbed it both ways, which is really cool. I'm happy that's working. That is a sweet deal right there. So I've been uh, driving this around for maybe, I don't know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes at the most. Everything seems fine. Um, I'm developing a little exhaust leak, which is kind of covering up some other sounds. I don't know uh, if the differential is making any noise at all. I don't think it is. Uh, so that's, that's a good sign in my books. Um, if I'm gonna say what kind of differences I notice, kind of, you know, the whole butt dyno thing, the only thing I can say is that it just feels uh, a bit more planted, especially when you like take a bump and then you got like different wheels touching the ground and um, you know, just a different kind of contact surface. It feels like it, it grips it more, it feels more stable. And then when you take a turn, it definitely feels uh, more stable and more like it's hanging on. Uh, that's about the only thing I can say. Uh, if you go uphill, it just feels like, um, you know, it's able to, to pull or push, I should say, um, and it doesn't have any trouble. Uh, in terms of, of power or speed, uh, I, I don't think that really made that much of a difference. Um, it, it is not a power adder. Um, it just gives you more uh, power to the, to the wheels or to the ground. Uh, you know, it, it's going to handle it. Uh, I think installing this and getting rid of some of the slop, basically, or the backlash, I should say, uh, that was uh, there from either from the factory or from some, something else, maybe just a misadjustment, I'm not 100% sure. Um, definitely helps a lot, it just feels a little bit more responsive, uh, so that's always a good thing. Other than that, I, I you know, but I know there's not really much you can tell uh, from it, but I have to say I'm happy to have it installed. Um, there is a, at least a bit of a difference uh, when driving. Uh, fixing the drum brakes also helped quite a bit. Uh, in terms of just uh, making sure that everything is solid and braking and if you're not comfortable doing brakes man don't do them get somebody to do them uh, for you uh, you know it, it, brakes are, are, are serious don't don't mess around with that Overall, this project took a little bit more out of me than I was anticipating. It's kind of one of those situations where uh, if it could happen, it did happen. That's why you'll notice like a lot of footage was deleted, mostly because, uh, you know, I, I started to get a potty mouth and then I get upset and frustrated and angry and that's kind of not something you want to catch on film. I'm telling you because it just happens, right? You're not the only one if this is, uh, you know, something that you go through. I really gotta, gotta fix that exhaust. Oh well, future project. But anyway, overall, I'm happy that all this stuff is done. I'm happy that, um, you know, the brakes are good. They're, they're all brand new. They, you know, just need maybe a little bit more adjusting. Uh, you know, no stress on that part. The differential is a lot better than it was before. So always a win. I just had to do some passing because I am driving, right? <laughs> um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, so it turns out, you know, cars really are pain. Uh, I think it's Donut or Donut Media uh, has said it best. Uh, they, they really are, are, are a test of patience. But uh, anyway, I'm rambling on right now. Uh, to summarize, I like what I did. I'm happy that I did it. So on that note, basically, I'm gonna leave you here. Thanks for watching. Uh, take it easy and get lost.